Good afternoon, King of the Nations. Pastor Greg is here. It is May the 17th. You know, for two months now, we have been doing this uh, online presentation, and uh, we've got to persevere a little, little further because the storm is almost over. And I am just so encouraged today because we're together and the Holy Spirit is going to speak through His Word. Some of us are dying on the inside and we need to be revived. And I, I believe the Word of the Lord and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come and, and strengthen your heart and bring you into a new place today as a result of listening to this message. I miss you all. It, it, I tell you what, it, it's really really difficult for this shepherd not to be with the sheep, not to lay hands on people, not to pray over them. I just so miss that. And, um, but I look forward to that day when we will be together again. And so we need to go a little further, as I said. Now, this Wednesday, now we've been teaching through the Bible on the Minor Prophets, and this Wednesday, we're going to be teaching on the book of Amos. And of course, the book of Amos really confronts the social injustice that was taking place in the land of Israel. And it's very applicable for, for today and what we're dealing with. So I want to invite you out. That's at 7 o'clock. We do that on Zoom. And uh, it's a very powerful time. We have a good time. And I'm going to continue teaching on Zoom through the summer. And I'll say more about that next Sunday. But let's go into the Word here today. We're in the midst of a series called The Indestructible Church. And today, what I want to focus in on is hearing the voice of God, hearing the voice of God. One thing that we need to, to really embrace is this. God doesn't speak to buildings. He speaks to his people. He speaks to his sons. He speaks to his daughters. He speaks to you. And so we need to get out of our mind that the church is a building. And if anything has come about through this pandemic and through the quarantine, as we have discovered in a fresh way, that the church is indestructible and it's not limited to gathering in a physical building. Peter says that we're living stones and we are being fitted together or built together to make up a spiritual house. That's who we are. But we have a Father that wants to talk to us. We have a Savior, the Lord Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, that wants to speak to our hearts in a relationship, in an ongoing dynamic. And that's what I want to focus in on today. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew, the 16th chapter. This is our text, and we're just drawing principles from this text. And uh, I want to do that today. But before we read the text, let's pray. Father, right now, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we love you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace in our lives. We thank you that you have not abandoned us. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of shaking, you are truly with us. And you know the end from the beginning. And Father, we can trust you with, with all that's going on. And we know that you will take care of us. And so I just pray that you would draw us in right now. I just pray, Father, that this entire body would be drawn into a place of hearing the heart of God. Spirit of grace, come and speak. Help me to teach and preach this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So why don't you come close? Anastasia, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> I just want to encourage you to come close. Get a pad of paper out. Take notes. The Lord's going to speak to you. Hearing the voice of God. You remember the last time you heard the voice of God? You remember what he said to you? Have you heard the voice of God recently? Are you listening? Do you have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has been saying to you? Don't be discouraged if you haven't heard the voice of God because I believe you're going to be catapulted into a place of encounter as a result of hearing the word of the Lord today. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Jesus is uh, really coming to the end of his ministry, and he's preparing his disciples uh, for really life without him. And I'll talk more about that from John chapter 14. But he, he walks 25 miles and, and 
to a place called Caesarea Philippi. He wants to be alone with his disciples. He wants to share his heart. He wants to ask them questions. And he does the same thing with us. He, he really is jealous for our time. Time is the key to really coming into a place of hearing in an ongoing way the voice of the Lord. And so he says this, Matthew chapter 16. Let's, let's look at this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. That's a promise. That's a promise we need to see today. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. And again, I want to underscore the power is in what Peter said, his confession. It's not in who Peter was. Peter wasn't the first pope. The church is not built on Peter. Peter was fallible, (laughs) not infallible. And so it's very, very important that we understand that because if we don't understand that, we will miss the opportunity that you and I have to hear the voice of God, just like Peter did in this passage. This is not a one-time event for Peter, and neither is it for us. God is seeking to build an interior structure that allows us to go through difficult seasons. And I believe that's what he's been doing. He's training us. He's disciplining us. He's, He's stripping us of other things that possibly have been distractions in our lives to bring us into a first love dynamic. And one of the ways that he strengthens us is speaking to us. And so I want to really elaborate on this. I believe Peter's encounter with the Father reveals to us that because of our relationship with him, that is the Father, we can hear his voice. As a pastor... I have noticed a pattern in the church that people who consistently struggle with different types of fear, anxiety, and worry are people who don't consistently hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. This has to change. Look, if I walk in torment and fear in an ongoing way, if, if, if there is an ongoing oppression in my life where I worry and I'm anxious, I'm not going to hear the voice of God. And so that needs to change, beloved. I believe there is no time like the present to get into a place where we hear a fresh word for our lives. The Father wants to restore confidence and break every lie the devil has spoken. The devil will speak to us and he'll say, it's too difficult to hear the voice of God. Or he'll say, you know, who are you to hear the voice of God? Those are all lies. And I heard in prayer this week, the Holy Spirit say, I want my sons and daughters to hear my voice. And so that's my passion today is to teach and enable us through the grace of God to come into a place of hearing. So let's move on. I've got selected scriptures that we're going to look at here, and I just want you to follow along. We can hear like Peter did, because, number one, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Turn to the person next to you. If anybody's with you, just say the Holy Spirit lives in you. That is an absolute incredible revelation. God lives in you. We would never, ever have fellowship with the Holy Spirit if our identity wasn't changed through the new birth from being a sinner to becoming a saint. Our identity was radically changed to the new birth, and now we are sons of God. Now we are children of God. So look at this. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans the 8th chapter. Hallelujah. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, 
they are sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage or the spirit of slavery. Again, that leads to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption or the spirit of sonship, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. John 14, 17 says, The world cannot accept him, meaning the Holy Spirit, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. Beloved, we need to capture this revelation today. The Holy Spirit lives in us. We are, we are tuned in. We have a channel. We have a link. We, we have a connection with the Holy Spirit because he lives within us. He's called the spirit of adoption. He's called the spirit of sonship. And he comes to reveal the presence of the Father. He comes to put into language in our inner being who Jesus is. He comes to help us understand what it means to walk with God. You know, inside our heads are many thoughts. And they're both good and they're both bad. And what I have learned is God's voice sounds like spontaneous flowing thoughts. I remember way back in 1981, I'd gone to Mexico that summer. The Holy Spirit spoke to me sovereignly about the call of God. I remember right where I was in San Luis Potosi, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And when I came back after that two-week trip, I was different. I, I knew that the hand of God was on my life, and I had an understanding that he was calling me to preach the gospel. And so I remember I was in a small Bible study with some singles, and um, this woman named Lydia Little was teaching the Word, and she was teaching out of Proverbs. And I remember this, thing, this, this Word kind of bubbled up in my heart, and the Holy Spirit said, go to Potomac Valley Nursing Home and apply for a job. And I'm like, where's Potomac Valley Nursing Home? <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to work at a nursing home. I want to go preach the gospel. And seriously, it was, it was a spontaneous flow of thoughts. And it was like, I got an idea. And so long story made short, the next day I called the, the nursing home, looked it up. There was a Potomac Valley nursing home. And I said, are you hiring? And they said, yes. And, and I said, okay, I'm going to come in and make application. And about three weeks later, I was driving the bus for Potomac Valley Nursing, Nursing Center. And it was, a, it was a season that I entered into to be trained by the Holy Spirit on how to care for people and how to minister to people. That was 1981. And I could, I could just tell you story after story after story where this spontaneous flow of thoughts, the voice of God, spoke to my heart and said, this is what I want you to do. And beloved, it's no different with you as well. Listen, when we walk in the Spirit, to the degree that we walk in the Spirit, we will hear the Spirit's voice. Let me say that again. We will walk in the Spirit to the degree that we talk with the Spirit of God. Now, here's something that I need to underscore is this, is that there are four, typically four competing voices um, for our attention. You may want to write these down for the test. Number one, the voice of God. The Holy Spirit speaks. Secondly, the voice of the devil. Now, the devil doesn't talk to you. The devil doesn't talk to me. You know, and let's not get over spiritual and say, yo, the devil was tempting me. No, um, his dominion, his, his minions, his demons uh, do his bidding, do his work. And there, there are very present demonic forces that are coming against you and coming against me. And so they try to talk to us as well. And then thirdly, the voice of the world, the voice of the world, uh, the world system, Babylon, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That, that is a voice. Hollywood speaks that, that language. We, you know, this is where we have to be careful about social media. What are we ingesting? What are we listening to? All of those things, the world, the voice of the world will dull our capacity to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then the fourth voice is our own voice. And, and that's where we, we really need discernment. You know, Peter, 
Peter declares that Jesus is Messiah. He's the son of the living God. The father spoke to him revelation knowledge, gave him an understanding of who Jesus is, what Jesus would do. And shortly after that, Peter's trying to talk Jesus out of going to the cross. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, for you do not savor the things of God. There was an influence, there was activity behind Peter's words that were tempting Jesus not to go to the cross. And Jesus rebukes him. You see, that's how quick you and I can be deceived. That's how quick we can allow the soul to, to govern and speak and really bring us outside of what God is saying. Those, those people, they say, Jesus says, who do others say that I am? Well, you're Elijah, you're Jeremiah, like one of the prophets. And they were drawing conclusions based on what they saw outwardly. They had no revelation. They did not hear the voice of God. Jesus, yes, was a prophet, but they did not understand who he was as the Son of God, as Messiah. And it takes God to know God, so we have to be patient with people. After the fall, Adam and Eve heard God in the garden, and they run and hide because they are afraid. I believe many are afraid of judgment or are prone to condemnation. The Holy Spirit will never shame us. On the contrary, we are thoroughly loved and accepted as a part of the family of God. We are the center of his love and affection. Let me say that again. We are the center of his love and affection. John 17 says that the father loves us the way that he loves Jesus. So in other words, the measuring stick for God's love is how the Father loves Jesus. And see, that's the Holy Spirit living in us. He's trying to help us come into an understanding of what that means. You know, in John chap or Luke chapter 3, we hear the Father's voice at the baptism of Jesus. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased and whom I love. That is what the Holy Spirit seeks to do. In our lives, he wants to reveal how how beautiful we are in Christ and, and how treasured we are and how significant we are. You see, the narrative that you listen to will determine how you walk with Jesus. And if you're listening to the voice of the enemy, if you're listening to the voice of the world, if, you're, if, you're, if your mind has not been renewed and has come into a place of, of having the mind of Christ, you're going to think thoughts that are totally contrary to what this word says right here. Beloved, we're in the midst of a storm. We must position ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit to come and help us hear the voice of the Father. And some of us are being shaken to our core. I tell you, when I heard the news, when the governor made his announcement, and then I heard Montgomery County is going to be closed for another couple of weeks, and PG County, my heart just sunk. And it, and it didn't sink because, oh, I'm afraid. It just sunk because... There are tons of people out there that are experiencing disappointment and hopelessness and, and who, are, who have small businesses that are dying and may never open again. And I just felt this disappointment in my heart and I struggled with that. And, and I tell you what, though, the Holy Spirit has just brought me the last few days. Has, the Lord has just brought me into a place of rest, into a place of peace, into a new place of trusting him. And I know the Lord has this. We're in his hands. He's got us, guys. And so we need to hear the voice of God, though. For yourself, you need to hear it. And yes, he speaks through leaders. And yes, he speaks through the body. But beloved, you're his son, you're his daughter, and he wants to speak directly to your heart. Praise the Lord. All right, let's move on here. I could preach, I think, all, all Sunday afternoon. I feel that good today. But let me just show you this verse again before we move on. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Who's leading you? What is leading you? He, if he's leading you, there will be peace. If he's leading you, there will be confidence. If he's leading you, there will be a conviction that you truly are in the Father's hands. So, sons of God, daughters of the King, sons of the King, are led by the Spirit of God. And listen, he hasn't given us a spirit of fear that leads to slavery again. Fear just produces torment and slavery, and it just really, really messes with us. 
And so the Holy Spirit will never lead us into that. Well, let's look at point two. I have 35 today. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to us. So number one, the Holy Spirit lives in us. So simple, but so profound. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Number two, the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us. We see in verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I have five kids. I talk to my kids. I talk to each one. Now, three out of the five are not living at home, but I talk to them. They know my voice. They know when Father is speaking. And it is that simple, beloved. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And so the Holy Spirit wants to communicate to us, not just on a Sunday afternoon, but moment by moment, day by day, he wants to bring revelation into our heart. Remember, revelation is what God says about himself, what God says about the kingdom, what God says about spiritual truth. And he wants to bear witness. The Wesley brothers, John and Charles, you know, what they would do is they would lead people to Christ and pray with them, the sinner's prayer, so on and so forth. But they would leave everything to the Holy Spirit after that. They wanted the individual to hear for themselves that they are a child of God. I tell you what, April 12th, 1981, you know, I went to, I came to church still inebriated and still hung over from the night before, but I sat in the back of that church. I heard the gospel and I surrendered my life to Christ. And I'm going to tell you this much. When I woke up Monday morning, I had a peace that I never knew before. And I heard the Holy Spirit. And I could tell that the Holy Spirit had changed me through the new birth and my identity had changed. I could tell because my desires were different. I didn't desire alcohol. I didn't desire um, immorality. I, I didn't desire the living in the root of bitterness that I had been living in for so many years. It was amazing. It was supernatural. And I'd become the temple of the Holy Spirit, filled with grace, filled with power. Power, we're the temple, we used to sing. And it was a reality. And here I am, saved for 24 hours, and I'm, I'm hearing the heart of God. I'm hearing the, the movement of the Spirit, and He's changing my desires. Oh, how beautiful that is. We will walk in the Spirit to the degree that we talk with the Spirit. Talk to Him. Speak to Him. Ask Him questions. Open your heart up. Let him hear what is in your heart. He already knows anyway. So the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us. At least seven times, seven times in the book of Revelation, Jesus speaks to the churches and he says, he who has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And again, there are many, many voices that can cause confusion. We know in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, this is powerful. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And there are ministries, Peter draws this out, there are false teachers, there are false prophets, there are false shepherds, and they're not preaching the full counsel of God. They're not preaching what Jesus has written in his word for us. And so it says, test, don't be gullible, don't be simple, test the spirit. Don't just hear and respond and react. I've ministered to many people who have come out of cults, who were gullible, who were ignorant to the word of God, and they open up their heart to a, a spirit that was a spirit of error and not a spi the spirit of truth. And they needed to be set free to come out of that. Very, very important. When Jesus is speaking to the seven churches and, and also several times in the gospel, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. What is he saying there? He's saying, pay attention. He's saying, listen up. He's saying, take time to listen. There's an urgency behind that, especially in the seven, with the seven churches. And we'll talk about one particular church here in a moment. Be aware of what I am saying. Again, I shared a couple of weeks ago, I am concerned that in the midst of boredom, in the midst of having a lot of time, 
we are not using that time to position ourselves to go after God, but we are detaching ourselves from that place of connection with God, and we're turning our heart towards things that do not satisfy. And, and I've done this, guys. I've, I've watched the, the movies and over the years, and I've, I've submitted myself, you know, nothing bad, but I've submitted myself to things that do not edify the spirit. And I'm telling you, the voice of the world makes our hearts dull. Do you have a dull heart today? Is there a detachment? Are you hearing the voice of God? Let the Holy Spirit show you. No condemnation, and I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but I want to challenge us because the key to going through this storm is hearing the voice of God. The Holy Spirit will tell us things we don't want to hear. This is called conviction, which leads to sanctification. All change begins by hearing his voice and obeying what he says to do. He will never, ever contradict the scriptures. And that's a principle you need to catch. He will never contradict his own word. Let me give you an example. Tax time. Woo, tax time. Tax time has been moved from April to July. Some of you are like, and what if, what if, You think you hear the Holy Spirit and you come and you say, Pastor, I got a word from God. The Holy Spirit told me not to pay taxes. What if the Holy what if you come to me and you say the Holy Spirit told you not to pay taxes? And you say, That's a word from God. And I say, No, it's not, because Romans chapter 13 teaches us that we need to submit to governing authorities and we are to pay taxes. It's right in the word right there. I should do a whole series on that one. So that's contrary. And I could give you example after example after example. The Holy Spirit will never contradict the word of God. We need to hear that. We need to understand that. So I, like Jehovah's Witness, the cult, they, they teach that Jesus came back in like 1914. He's, he's got a condominium in, in Brooklyn. He came to Brooklyn in 1914 before the Great War. And they teach that was the coming of the Lord. That is totally false because his coming is going to be a physical appearance. Every eye will see him. Do you see the contradiction there? That's a spirit of error. That's a false prophet. That is not to be embraced. But yet, people are gullible. People are ignorant. People don't know the scriptures. And there's a spirit of deception. And as a result of that, they can't discern and they don't understand. And they're led into bondage and captivity. And we need to minister to people like that. We need to minister to Muslims. They don't believe in the Son of God. But you know what? Scores and scores of Muslims around the world are being saved. God is sovereignly visiting Muslims around the world and revealing his son Jesus to them. You know, but it it, it takes revelation. It takes the Holy Spirit to come and bring them into a place. Just like Peter, who said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. It takes the Holy Spirit to speak to a Muslim and bring revelation that Jesus is the son of God. Whoa. And he does it. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit doesn't always tell us what we want to hear. I think of Peter, and he hits it, man. He gets an A+. Plus. He's, he, we're reading about him today. We're, we're drawing principles from Peter's life today. And yet, Peter is spoken by Jesus on the night that Jesus was betrayed. And he tells Peter that he's going to deny him three times. And Pete's like, never. These jokers around me, they may do it. I'm willing to go to prison with you. I am even willing to die for you. And Jesus speaks by the Spirit and says, Pete, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. He didn't accept it. He didn't accept it because of the pride in his life. He didn't accept it because he did not have a full understanding that the spirit of truth was speaking the true condition of his heart. He was speaking prophetically of what he was going to do. He couldn't embrace it. He was unteachable, and that's my point. And beloved, the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us, but we need to be teachable. We need to be correctable. 
We need to have our heart open for correction so that we can come into a place of safety. And he does that through one another. He does that through the body. He does that through the preached and taught word. He does that when we open up the scriptures and we begin to read and and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And he brings an understanding. He spoke to me that way yesterday. Yesterday morning, he spoke very directly to me. Beloved, we cannot, cannot fight against that. And we're not going to like everything he has to say. But he loves us enough to say what we need to hear. Hallelujah. Now let's go, let's go to um, Revelation chapter 3. Revelation 3. And we're almost done for today. Revelation chapter 3. Jesus is speaking to the church of Laodicea. Laodicea, I've been to Laodicea and there's nothing there. Um, major earthquake, I think it was in the 4th century, just destroyed the city, destroyed the church, so on and so forth. The Laodiceans were very, very wealthy. They, um, they were very prosperous. They had high-paying jobs. They had comfort. They had security. And, and they begin to allow the comfort and the security that they had in their finances. It was a very prosperous city. They allowed that to totally displace the lordship of Jesus in their life. And they begin to live in such a way that I don't need to hear the voice of God. I'm rich and so on and so forth. So Jesus, because of love, shows up and, and, and speaks to the church of Laodicea. And, and this is what he says in verses 19 through 22. Let's look at this. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now, let me just say this to you. Repentance gets us back into a place where we can hear the voice of God. Repentance brings us back into right alignment with God himself. Repentance causes us to turn from the wrong direction and go in the right direction. And that is a gift, and that comes out of God's goodness, and we need to live a lifestyle of repentance. So as many as I love, and he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, now gets this, if anyone hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am, and, and am set down with my father in his throne, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Anyone is, is gender neutral, so that's man or woman. It doesn't matter what age. This is an an invitation. And when he says, I want to sup with you. Wow. It's the most into in that culture. It was the most intimate meal that you could have. It was only for trusted friends. It was very intimate. It was heart to heart. There was access there. It'd be like you coming and sitting right here at this table. And then the two of us, we break bread together and we talk about Jesus and we talk about our hearts. This is the one that we are following. And the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us as Jesus was speaking to the church of the Laodiceans and knocking on the door, a knock of mercy. The Holy Spirit is doing that for us today. He wants to speak to us. And you're going, you're thinking, Pastor, are you implying that I've shut the door? No, I'm not implying that. But I do know this, that there are many that are hearing my voice right now that have a Laodicean mindset and you are detached and darkened in your understanding and you are not experiencing intimacy. You're not hearing the voice of God. And that needs to change today through the grace of God. And he's here to help us today. Jesus is a loving, as I said last week, he's a loving but fierce bridegroom who is jealous for our devotion. There is no passivity or detachment on his part, but he passionately seeks to comfort, confront in us the things that hinder love. What Jesus is after the church is first commandment living. He wants first commandment, man. He is crazy about us and he's seeking to speak to our hearts today. Walter Butler, I recommend anything that he writes, just a powerful uh, commentary on uh, Revelation chapter 3, it says, His knocking on this doorway of spiritual opportunity indicates the Lord's singular desire to personally meet with us. Notice that the emphasis is on our hearing and responding. 
Since this is the voice of the Lord knocking, spiritual perception and sensitivity is required for us to hear. Our capacity for spiritual perception can be increased in several ways. Through teaching, by our feeding on the word, by our fellowship with the Lord, and by prayer. It is very important that we seek to improve our ability to hear his voice. And that's what I'm after today. If Peter could hear the voice of the Father and declare to Jesus who he was, so can you. You know, it's interesting in this passage in Revelation, it, ha it has a great promise. Here is a backslidden, lukewarm, carnal church. And Jesus in verse 16 even says, listen, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. We can't abide together with this lukewarm spirit. And, but he gives a promise that they will sit on his throne with him. What an incredible, that speaks of the millennial kingdom. What an incredible promise. Listen, no matter how low you go, and some of us might be in a backslidden condition, and we might have gone pretty low, and we're detached, and we're self-condemned, and we're confused, and we're hearing the voice of the enemy, and we're hearing our own voice condemn us, and God's voice is far, far away. At least we think so. But God can take you out of that place and bring you into a new place and empower you to walk intimately with him. And he gives you that promise as he gives me that promise that we can sit upon his throne. Isaiah 30, I, I, I woke up with this on my heart this morning. And it says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Then you will desecrate your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, away with you. And I tell you what I've learned the last 39 years is this, that sanctification, a transformed mind, a renewed mind, the, the, the bondages, the, the attitudes that aren't right, the behavior that isn't like Jesus, the Holy Spirit's voice brings liberty and sets us free. And where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. And so the idols of our life, the bondages of our life, the, the, the emotional bondage, the, 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 the fears, the worry, the anxiety, those things like that, as we hear his voice, the power of those things are broken. It's wonderful. Beloved, listen, we cannot, we need the body. We need one another. But we cannot depend on the body. We cannot depend on others. We cannot depend on spiritual leadership. We, we, we're, we're not robots. We're human beings that possess the Holy Spirit, that have been bought with a price, that have the living God living inside of him. And all of us have the potential within us to walk in intimate friendship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lastly, the Holy Spirit wants to teach us how to hear the voice of God. I must hurry. It says, in 1 John chapter 2, beautiful passage, 1 John chapter 2, 26 to 27. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. There it is again. As for you, the anointing you received, just think of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you, get this, about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, abide in him or remain in him. So what is John saying? He's not contradicting himself because John is a teacher. He's a preacher. There's a five-fold ministry that the church needs. But what he's saying is you have, you have all the goods to hear the voice of God for yourself. You can walk in revelation. You, we, we, you can be a person of revelation. You can have an ongoing, ongoing communion and co connection with the Holy Spirit, and he's going to teach you about all things. Do you have any questions? Well, ask him. He's such a glorious teacher. Jesus says he is a teacher, and he's going to teach you all things, and he's going to remind you what I have said to you. And so the Holy Spirit wants to teach us how to hear the voice of God. John chapter 10, powerful, quoted often, says the goat keeper, the goat keeper, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. 
He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. These sheep were not taught how to recognize the voice of their shepherd. They came to know his voice because they spent so much time with him. The time we spend waiting upon the Lord is tremendously important. Each one of these is a message. Again, I remind us that (laughs) Jesus doesn't speak to a building. He speaks to his people. He speaks to the spiritual house. He doesn't speak to a a building made by man. He speaks to you. He speaks to me. Now, Mike Bickle, who I greatly appreciate, some time ago, he he said this. He said, and I quote him here. He says, when you pray, say this. Let me see what you see and let me feel what you feel about. Now, you fill in the blank. Let me see what you see and let me feel what you feel about the church. Let me see and feel what you see and feel about my family, about my kids, about my spouse, about my city, about the nation, about my call. You see, when we begin to communicate that way, when we say to the Holy Spirit, I want to feel what you feel about this matter. I want to feel what you feel. I want to see what you see. We are talking to him and we're inviting him to communicate to us his very heart. And as a result of that, things happen. We live in a place of revelation. We go to an, another realm. We, we come away from those voices. We discern very easily. This is the voice of the demon that's been sent on assignment to harass me. I won't submit to that lie. This is the voice of the world. And I'm not going to allow my mind to be defiled and to be carried down a stream of filth and, and oppression and, and false comforts and so on and so forth. No, 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 no. I'm living in a different realm. And I hear his voice. And I'll tell you what I've learned in my own life. When I hear the voice of God and I submit to the Spirit's leading, there is always peace and there's always rest. Oh, what a beautiful prayer. Let me see what you see. Let me feel what you feel. And you see, that's the prayer of a disciple. That's, that comes from a heart that really wants to know the will of God, that really wants to see what God sees. Beloved, there's so much to say. I want to encourage you today. I'll close with this quote by Dallas Willard, great, great man of God, um, spoke much on the spiritual disciplines and on hearing the voice of God. And he said this, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. When we get up out of bed in the morning, among our first thoughts should be this, Lord, speak to me. I'm listening. I want to hear your voice. This is not because it's a nice way to start the day, but because the only thing that can keep us straight is being full of God and full of the word. If you don't do something like this, you do not have the option of having a neutral mind. Your thoughts cannot be empty. And may we, may we, can we do that this week as a ministry? Can we, can we, in a fresh way, just begin to position ourselves and hear that knock and hear the invitation that comes for us to literally sup with Jesus through the Holy Spirit? Can we wake up tomorrow and can we just say, speak, your servant is listening? I, I know this. And mothers, I, I have so much compassion with, for you because I watched what Margie went through with five kids and we had three in diapers. We had twins. And, and I just know, man, things just unfold. Things just unfold. And it's like, whoa, I can't even pray. I, I, I've got to do diapers. got to do wash. I got to prepare breakfast. I got to. And I, I get it. And I understand this. And Catherine Renola says this. This is, this is just for the mothers right here. Spending time with him will make us more fruitful, but he understands our limitations. He wants our heart and our fellowship, not a timesheet. He wants our heart and our fellowship, not a timesheet. I don't want you to come away from this message feeling condemned. I don't want you... Uh, to come away from this message feeling like you could never do what I talked about. And I'll tell you this, it's all grace. 
It's, it's the work of the Holy Spirit and it's grace. And, and it, it's the help that he gives us that enables us to hear his voice. Beloved, we need to hear his voice. At this time in our country's history, the church needs to hear. Listen, the church has the solution for the world. There's no other place that gives the solution that the world needs except the church of Jesus Christ. We have the gospel. We have the Holy Spirit. We have an understanding of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. The church is the only agency, I'll say that, that has the solution for the nations of the world. And you're going, how can that be? It's true. It's in the word. The church has the solution. We have an opportunity what are we going to look like when we come out of this storm? Are we going to be closer to Jesus? Are we going to be more confident in hearing his voice? Are we going to be closer to our family? What are we going to look like? Ha. Let's seize the moment. Let's seize the opportunity. Let's, let's really redeem the time. Amen? One more time. The Holy Spirit. We can hear we can hear like Peter did because, number one, the Holy Spirit lives in us. Talk to him. Number two, the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us, wants to talk to us. Number three, the Holy Spirit wants to teach us how to hear his voice. And that's a lifelong journey. Let's pray. Thank you for being here, church. Thank you for listening. Father, right now, in the name of your son, Jesus, Oh, Lord, you've heard this message, and I pray that you would truly meet us where we are. I pray that we would hear the knock of mercy. I pray that we would hear the invitation that comes from your heart. I pray, Father, that all the other voices and all the other demands and all the distractions and even confusion that may be on anyone's life today, I pray that all that would be broken. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come like a river that you would flow in every living room right now, that you would flow in every bedroom, that you would move mightily in every kitchen, that you would flood the house with your presence and take us where only you can take us. Lord, may a spirit of encouragement rest, rest upon this body. Lord, teach us how to hear, teach us how to listen, and teach us how to obey. And I just thank you for this day. And I thank you for what you're going to do this week. And Lord, may we as a body, in a sense, covenant with one another right now that we will wake up, we will wake up on Monday morning and say, here I am, your servant is listening. Holy Spirit, speak to me. I pray that you would usher us into new dimensions of relationship with you. We love you. We thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Church, I just want to encourage you. In your giving, I thank you for your faithfulness. I know that some of you are not working. I understand that. And listen, again, to those of you that are not working and, and you're struggling, God has you. He's not going to let you slip through the cracks. He's going to take care of you. And if you have any immediate needs, uh, like groceries, whatever, if, if some needs are, are very real and you can't meet those needs, please let us know here at King of the Nations. And we want to help you. And, uh, but give, be faithful. God will honor that. And uh, we're going to be back together in June. I believe that. We're going to be together again. Amen. So may the Lord richly bless you all. I look forward to uh, seeing you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock as we study the book of Amos. Lord bless you.